Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Bash Mania, the first Bash Mania of 2022. It's going to be an interesting year. This is episode 149 of the podcast, and this is brought to you by our friends at Attack. If you guys listen to this podcast, you know how much I love Attack. Attack is an app for athletes. It's an AI strength and conditioning coach, a nutritionist, and a mentality mentor, all in your pocket, all in one app. Your age, your goals, your program is their tagline because that's the truth. Whatever your goals are, whatever you want to accomplish, whether you're a young wrestler and you want to accomplish that goal, whether you're someone like me about to have a kid, want to stay in shape, whatever your goals are, attack will let you have a plan and they'll give you workouts to attack or you can log your own workouts if you're doing something of your own. So go download attack. It's an app in the Apple app store today. A-T-A-C attack. Be sure to follow them on social. They're A-T-A-C dot A-P-P. I don't have a mic. You're, you're good. Don't don't worry. You're, you're here. That's all that matters. This is overdue. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode, we've been kind of talking about this for a couple months. I've been lazy with reaching out to Taylor to make it happen. Shout out, Taylor. Thank you for coordinating. Um, I don't even know where to start this. I was... I I do hours and hours of prep before every episode. And my goal is always to try to bring out as much value and entertainment for everybody listening. And you're one of those people that have accomplished so much, are doing so many cool things. It's hard to pick a starting point. So let's, let's pick a starting place with what you've been up to recently because we've seen you in a WWE ring. We've seen you ringside with Wiz Khalifa. You're driving new Mustangs. You got it going on everywhere. What have you been up to? <laughs> uh, so funny. Oh, uh, well, currently what I've been up to is fighting to just relax and take a step back and just spend time with my husband and not be drowned in so many really really cool events yeah so that's what i've currently been doing last night uh or yesterday me and my husband just spent all day playing video games and it was the (laughs) best thing ever what were you playing (laughs) um for a while i was playing halo and then i played overwatch now are you guys very competitive um no okay yes so it (laughs) no yes real quick (laughs) okay so halo i just recently started playing i don't like competitive games but halo has a story mode and i love i love rpgs love rpgs i'm I'm more of an rpg so bring in far cries bring in tomb raiders bring in bioshocks bring in story modes i'm that person so halo and overwatch are the two competitive like online games that i play I'm not a Call of Duty fan, but I love playing zombies with my husband. <laughs> I I was like addicted to Call of Duty for there was a point where I was on a lot of phone calls for my company and phone calls bore me because <laughs> especially with multiple people, because I'm like, this should have been like a five minute thing and it's 30 minutes. So I started playing Call of Duty more and more zombies, everything while on phone calls. So I'm sitting there with headphones in. And just playing because then I'm like, okay, now my ADD is taken care of. I can listen to what you're saying and respond and also play Call of Duty. But I haven't played wait, in a while, but I was wait, wait, wait. did you ever ever did you ever have random outbursts like on those calls? Yes, Call but yes, but I mute the phone. I was smarter oh. than that. <laughs> okay. I'd mute my mic and then unmute it when I was like having to say something. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because competitive games make me want to throw my controller at a freaking wall disproportionately yes (laughs) so that's what i've been really up to lately that that's good for me you know the biggest thing growing up a huge wwe fan and watching gable and you and, and shout out jacob casper one of the best humans alive he's living his dream out right now what was that experience like like right after the Olympics, SummerSlam, I was so jealous. <laughs> like, come on. That's like life goals, right? Like SummerSlam bucket list, like backstage at SummerSlam. 
What was that like for you? Oh my gosh. It, it was in, uh, it was freaking incredible. And I actually got to see Casper and his brother um, at the developmental center in Florida uh, a few months ago. I actually don't know when, but being at SummerSlam, I, I honestly was starstruck. And at the same time, I felt like I belonged. It was really weird. And when I got up in the ring, with 50,000 people all screaming. I got chills, goosebumps. <laughs> oh my, it, it was incredible. It felt, it felt like I was immersed in just happiness and love. And it was incredible. Like I, I felt them like in my heart, just screaming. And when Gable actually like raised my hand and they all just went, <laughs> I was like, this is freaking incredible. I want to slap everybody's hand. I want to talk to everyone. But then I would have never gotten home. But yeah. it, it was it was phenomenal. I had so much fun. And my family had so much fun too. Like, shout out to WWE for like flying so many people out there for me and putting us in a suite and just making sure we had a good time. And I got to like meet Vincent. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so jealous. It's it was it was awesome. You've had you've had like so many experiences like after the Olympics. For me, that's obviously like that's the one. But would you say that's like the craziest, or what's like the craziest or wildest thing since winning Olympics? Well, there's been so many wild things. Like I was on the Kelly Clarkson show as well. And I, I got to do that, but sadly I had to do it from a hotel room because I had got COVID and they were like, we still want to make this happen. So that in itself was incredible. And then on top of that, I got to go to the PFL fights and I was, I was ringside and I was cheering on one of my, my friends, Clarissa Shields, um, as she, uh, as she fought in her second fight and meeting with Khalifa was freaking incredible amongst other people like he wasn't the only one i i got yeah. to meet i got to meet street jesus and i'm like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> like, like it was just it was so many there was so many people that i got to meet like i'm brain fighting on the names but um yeah that that in itself was oh an amazing experience which got me like going man do I still want to keep wrestling? All this stuff is really, really cool. And they all want me to do, like, be a part of their programs. Yeah. And then on top of that, getting a free car without any attachments from Doggett Ford, that was incredible. Because I, I heard, like, uh, even though you become an Olympic champ, you, you don't get a free car. They just did that because of the human that I am and just like how I represent in America. And they were like, we got to do something for this girl. And they wanted to give me a free car. So I'm sitting up here driving in a free Ford (laughs) Mustang. That, that there's nothing like, even if it's not free, even just like, I love the older I get, the more I love gifts. And there's something about knowing it was a gift that makes it more special. Like, you can buy a Mustang, but knowing it was a gift, like there's something special about that relationship when you get like a gift like that. Exactly. Speaking of gifts, what I do with my old cars, because um, I also bought a uh, my dream car, Toyota Tundra uh, 1784 edition or yeah, I think so. 1784 edition. Brown, brown out, brown in or brown out and tan inside. Yeah, uh, that's a good combo. The old, it's so beautiful and it looks black like from far away it's, oh it's so beautiful but um the old vehicles i actually gave them gave them away without selling them so i gifted those that's and amazing that felt super incredible yeah. like, you get the free car you get a free car, <laughs> you <have> the free car. <laughs> that's amazing and, and it seems like it's so well deserved and you know I, I did notice that you stayed so calm and poised after the Olympics, like really true to yourself, which I think like a lot of people almost weren't expecting because so many people nowadays like PR themselves. And, you know, there was no faking it with you. There was no like, let me put my 
PR cap on like that first interview after you won. I called one of my buddies and I'm like, she's the story of the Olympics, like especially within wrestling. Like as soon as you gave that interview and it started going wild and I'm like the fact that it's so genuine, it's so authentic. A lot of people, they struggle with and we're in such a brand crazy world. They're almost over focusing on their brand where they're doing themselves a disservice because they're not being genuine. As that all played out, like, did you know that like you were becoming this big story from the Olympics? <laughs> no, I did not. Um, Helen Marilla has actually had talked to me before we even started competing about what was going on. And uh, I, I looked at her and I was like, girl, I don't care about that. I'm going to be myself. Matter of fact, <laughs> I'm about to spread a whole bunch of love. So I'm going to put a, I'm going to put heart symbols up and I'm going to show people, be yourself, love and care for people. And uh, yeah, just be who you are. And so yeah. after the match, when I gave, man, I had a lot of interviews and there was another interview I didn't realize it was recording. And I like whispered it into the camera, something. And then like, I got a bunch of texts that said, you know, that was live. The entire nation actually heard you. I'm like, ah, oh. oh, that's why we can't have nice things. Darn it. My bad. But um, from a PR standpoint, I find it difficult to constantly worry about what people have to say and like what people think. It's yep. it, it's it's difficult to try to satisfy everybody's needs and um one of the things that i've learned over the decades and years is be who you are because everyone else is taken and okay. who i am is somebody that is loving carefree wanting to give everybody hugs and just trying to spread love and joy and so that that's who I was. And I yeah. did not realize America would love that so much. <laughs> well, it, it's kind of a good segue to a question I was going to ask in a few minutes, but I know another crucial component to your career is your faith and you don't shy away from it. And you not only have like that contagious energy, contagious smile, your faith is contagious. And it's not just, there's some people that when the spotlight's on, they want to be politically correct. And maybe they speak like Christianese or something, but like I saw you on Dan Bongino's show and there, <laughs> I saw you on Dan Bongino's show and there was no, like, let me try to say the right thing. You were just like, yeah, I'm praying about what to do next. Like that's, that's the heart of God. How critical has your faith been throughout your career? Oh my gosh. It has been, my Christianese has been, <laughs> I've never heard that word. That's so funny. <laughs> well, I've heard it like in the church, like when, when you get people who they talk like they're, I don't know, sometimes people get so lackadaisical and being human and they try to talk at like a level that's almost like above someone or they're trying to speak like a proper Christian method of it's, it's not, it's not genuine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, about that i'm more of a person that likes for everyone to understand me and i speak in layman's terms and yep, that's same in every dialect <laughs> whether i'm trying to speak spanish or english or christianese i yep. want everyone to i don't want people to feel intimidated and yep. so i'm not going to try to come off intimidating i want to bring people to the faith and not deter them and so mm -hmm. I think that's one of the reasons why I am how I am. And when I, when I talk about my faith, I want people to know it's from love and not from belittling. Because I, I know a lot of people have had terrible experience in the Christian faith and in the church mm -hmm. about being belittled and judged. And I don't want people to see that in, in the Christian faith because that's not what it's about. I don't have any room to judge. I'm not the judge. I'm just someone that's just trying to be your friend, love, and get you get you where you need to be together. And yeah. um, on Dan Bongino show, um, I said that Dan, the Don Bongino show, I was again just being myself. And I, I like I said, like I'm just praying about it. My faith has been an immense part of my life, not just on the mat, 
but off the mat. It's the reason why I'm able to stay so humble. And it's the reason why I believe I've gotten so far the way I've gotten here. Like by just yeah. staying true to myself and not trying to be um, like, like, what did you say? Christianese. Yeah, Christianese and like, <laughs> yeah, Christianese and like, uh, like worrying about what people are yeah. going to think. Because in the end, like the judge is going to be when I die, go to heaven. And um, one of the things that somebody had t- uh, texted me one day was, hey, if you died or if you were put on trial today, would you be guilty or not guilty for being a Christian? Like if people looked at your life, would you be would you be? guilty or not guilty yeah. and i went oh snap i want to be guilty at all get out without <laughs> any question i want people to be like oh that chick was she was christian like right. in, her, something's in, her wrong out. with her right you could definitely see her love is for christ <laughs> yeah so um yeah i thank you for asking about my faith it's uh it's a huge part of who i am and yeah. uh it's evident. And, you know, there's so many things that go into a career and I feel like there's so many media outlets that they don't give people that opportunity. And it's like, you're doing a disservice to fans, to younger wrestlers who are listening and saying, I want to be like him. I want to be like her. Well, it's not about how many shots you take in practice. Always. It's not about, you know, there's so many things that come into play. Like I was thinking this morning, as I'm preparing for this, it's like, you know, you also made the Olympic team in 2016 and the weight wasn't qualified and, and (laughs) you're an Olympic champ now. It's okay. (laughs) The, where I was like, my brain was going was the, the thought of having to wait so long for something and not getting burned out. And that's where I was kind of thinking, going back to your faith, it's like, it's a lot. I've had a company for 13 years and I know what it's like to get burned out mentally. And when I started thinking about the different aspects where I think faith could impact you, it's like when you have a goal, it's very hard to sustain it through ups and downs, through longevity, where it's like, especially the Olympics, even worlds, you're one year out. That's a far smaller countdown than Olympics, which is another four years. I'm curious how you kind of sustained those goals without burning out and how your faith kind of played a role in that. Um, I definitely made sure I had fun. And uh, that that's that's a huge thing because. Work without fun to me. I would get burned out yep. like it, like it it is crucial that I'm laughing and that I'm enjoying myself, myself, especially doing something as difficult as preparing for worlds or preparing for the Olympics, which is high stakes and high pressure. And there's just, there's so much riding on you. And like, this is, this is all you've ever wanted in like your entire wrestling career is to be an Olympic champ, to be a world champ. Yeah. And I'm not about that, uh, all that pressure. So that's one of the reasons why I sang every day at the Olympics and like I brought that karaoke machine and I brought my gaming system. My, uh, one of my coaches is Bonikov. Um, we call him Izzy. He made sure before we left for the Olympics, he was like, Tamara, make sure you bring your gaming system and your karaoke. Matter of fact, pack that first. (laughs) (laughs) Then you can pack everything. Everything <laughs> else, we, we can get in. We can get in Japan. But just pack all that, all the fun things. Pack first, because he knows I need to have fun. Because um, yep. I, I prepare and practice all the time. Like I make sure I go one hundred percent time, and I go hard. I I try to go right, and I make sure I give my all in practice. But then you have to have fun. And during the pandemic, when people didn't know if there was going to be an Olympics. I wasn't freaking out. (laughs) That's one of the things that carried me. uh, My faith was one of the things that carried me through all that uncertainty was I I knew that we were going to have the Olympics. I I just left my faith, um, left all my worries to God and was like, you know what? 
this is just more time for me to relax and spend time with my family. So yeah. this is actually a blessing in disguise. I get to have more fun before the Olympics. <laughs> right. And then we were able to train again. <laughs> yeah. And on the other side of that, uh, you know, you talk 2016, you talk 2020, 2021. Oh, yeah. There's been a lot of attention in the last couple of years around mental health. And with the Olympics, there's a big issue right now where people are the center of the attention, the center of the media. And then as soon as the Olympics are over, that's yesterday. And you go from spotlight and attention and praise and this and that to nothing. And especially in a sport like wrestling, you go from the greatest pinnacle, arguably in sports to a gym in New York city. You know, it's like, it's such a 180. How has that been for you kind of not getting too high, not getting too low and just kind of embracing it? Um, it has been honestly, it's, it's weird that you say that. So at the Olympics, it was kind of, it was actually more chill uh, then than it is now because for four and a half months, I think I was just doing so much media yeah. that no one prepared me for that. <laughs> I was so confused. So that that my experience was incredible. People wanted me to go there, here, everywhere. And I honestly tell you the truth, I have not really uh, stepped on a wrestling mat and worked out actually <laughs> and, uh, since world championships. I am, um, I'm on a hiatus, I'd like to call it, where sabbatical I'm, hiatus. Yes, I said, oh, yes, <laughs> sabbatical, where I'm doing just dance and it's currently cold outside, so I'm not running. So just dance. <laughs> Been very fun. <laughs> Looking Sounds for a sponsor, it. just dance. Uh, I'm a great <laughs> advocate. Switch people. <laughs> there you go, people listening. <laughs> right. But um, um, for me personally, I haven't. Uh, experience that high and low yet maybe in exercise wise but media yeah. I'm still getting hit up like across the board and I'm, I'm like I said earlier I'm fighting to just get some alone time yeah. but at the same time I'm really excited because it, it it's really cool to be in a spotlight because that's what I asked for yeah. it's what I prayed about when I first started wrestling I prayed to be an inspiration to as many people as I possibly could and to just get the word out that God loves you and that without him, I wouldn't be where I am today. And that's in anything and everything that I do. I try to put God first. Yeah. And that was the beginning of my, my career, my wrestling career was to get the word of God out there. And so yeah. I'm not, if I, if there ever is a time where there is a low in media and attention I'm honestly just going to be grateful, yeah. <laughs> do my Bible study and just go, Hala, thank you, Lord, for another some, some day quiet. of relaxation. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. And, you know, same thing with like from a post Olympic crash. Similarly, there's things where like you win the Olympics, then you don't have a match, go your way at world championships, still win a bronze. But I know how hard so many wrestlers are in themselves with expectations. You're one of the best wrestlers in the world. You lose one match. What's your perspective after that? Um, my perspective. You still going, put the heart up. I know I did. I still, even when I lost, I put, I put the heart and then I broke it. <laughs> but, but, um, with that, I, I just had to be true to myself. And honestly, I wasn't making excuses. I just had to be true. And yeah. I had COVID a few weeks before and I hurt my back. And the training that I had before, before I uh, went to world championships was spread out between a total of seven days. So wow. I, I honestly was proud of myself under the circumstances yeah i'd say so because <laughs> <laughs> i could not i did not want to tell any of my opponents this but i hurt my back and we didn't even know if i was going to be able to wrestle at world championships and at world championships i couldn't uh manage my weight 
like everybody else could, which was running. I could barely run for five minutes without wow. hurting my back. And so I was in the tub, Epsom salt bathing, just trying to like slip the weight off. And I, well, after COVID, I just lost a lot of weight too. So it was, it was, it was, it was kind of okay. But um, yeah, like I, under the circumstances, like I said earlier, I was proud of myself. I cried every single day at world championships because I didn't want to be there. So I was in, you know, pain. And I kept lying to everybody going, I can do this. (laughs) It's going to be okay. And then in my room, cuddle up in bed. (laughs) My husband's telling me, he's like, why are you there? Tamara, you don't have to do this. You don't have anything to prove. My coaches said they need me. (laughs) <laughs> oh, me trying to be a people pleaser. But um yeah, well, world championships was rough. And uh yeah, I have no pressure on myself. Now I granted I I did put some pressure on myself and I did feel a little sorry for myself, but luckily I have my husband on my side and my husband said, You are still loved, Tamara. And we, I know exactly what you went through before all those matches. You weren't yourself the first match. You weren't yourself the second match. Like you weren't yourself in any of those matches. And yet you still managed to be loving and pull yourself back up and still triumph. So good job. Now stop feeling sorry for yourself and know that you're still an Olympic champ and no one will take that away from you. And yeah, he's, He's a really good motivator. I kind of like him. I kind of keep him. I'll, I guess I'll keep him around. <laughs> he sounds like a keeper. And I think it's true. Like you already know this, but to add to that, I think sometimes, sometimes people pray for a platform for the wrong reasons. And it's one of those things where I think you're so genuine that one of the many reasons maybe God did give you this platform was for you to show the world in defeat how you look it wasn't like you won the olympics and you're like god's so good and then after worlds it's like yeah god you know there was no like murmuring obviously i'm sure there's some disappointment but to hold up to that i think says a lot and and speaking of of a platform i don't know how much you know about me or don't but i run a marketing company for the last 13 years we do social media we build custom websites and our clients want followers everybody wants followers you went from like 10, 15,000 to 140, <laughs> like you 10 X at minimum. What the heck was that like? Um, that was incredible because I was, tr- I was trying to get followers like years leading up to the Olympics <laughs> yeah. and it seemed like it wasn't happening. Even after I won world championships there were people who had never won worlds with more followers than me. And I was so confused. I'm like, what, what do the people want? <laughs> and I, I just had to go, you know what? I don't care what the people want. I am just going to do me and walk with God and I'm going to see what happens. And when I got all those followers, I was like, yeah, that's right. Stay true to Christ. That's right. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was honestly truly incredible and um man i'm i'm excited i, I I'm, I'm just excited i'm like wow this is thanks for all the love y'all like i saw you put the note you. up like a couple days like so there's a lot of new followers let me introduce myself <laughs> oh yeah i had yeah after the olympics i had to reintroduce who I was to my new followers. (laughs) Allow me to reintroduce myself. (laughs) Like, uh, my name is Savannah. I'm married for five years and I like wrestling and walking my dogs and playing video games. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I don't like working out 24 seven just because I'm an Olympic wrestler doesn't mean that I do. It's so cool that social media does give you that platform where you can just tell people, this is who I am. This is who I'm not. And I think yeah. you've done a really good job too with your brands and your sponsors. I think, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know this because we haven't talked about it before, but you're you're with Rudis and you're always wearing Rudis gear. You mentioned Dog at Fort. You have some posts mm-hmm. about them. 
And I'm curious for you what the pers- what the perspective has been on aligning yourself with the right brands. I'm sure everybody reached out. And especially like you said, when you're in a place where you're looking to grow a platform, you're looking for followers, you're looking to build your brand. And then all of a sudden, the, the three, four, five years of hard work to do that happens like this to some degree. And now you got, you know, I know Rudis was already a sponsor of yours and you're already with them, but what's it been like working with brands and sponsors for you? Um, it's honestly been a blessing because, uh, well, the fact that they were so invested in me and, and, and like before the Olympics, it just said a lot about their brand. Cause I'm also connected with pure and clean as well. And I love that they're faith-based and they're also family oriented. Like it's just a bunch of family members in that, in that entire system. And I, I love that just faith and family. It's ah, and business. <laughs> that's not a, that's not an S so faith, family, business. Right. But, um, I, it's important to me to align myself with good brands. Cause I don't want people to look at a brand and go, wait, Tamara is aligned with them and they're wait, they don't, they don't seem like a really good brand. It seems like they, they are kind of just like mistrusting, like, or yeah. like you, you don't feel like you can trust them and they don't look, seem like they stand for what she stands for. And I, I, I have to be careful because yeah, people associate you with that and oh yeah, people get butt hurt. So yeah. Rudis, I love that because they are also um, the uh, the head guys. They're faith based and they're really genuine people, and they're oh, they're so kind hearted. So um, I'm not aligned with a lot of brands. I'm I'm very picky. that's good. Yeah, that's how it should be. <laughs> but I do have an agent, and well, my agent knows that I pick you too. So yeah, I finally um, got one. <laughs> so you mentioned in that amazing interview at the Olympics, which you can't watch and not cry. I watched it last night again. And I'm just like, why am I doing this to myself? But <laughs> one of the- myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, how important is it for you? You mentioned this in there and I just want to expound early on it, but for little girls to see what you've accomplished and see themselves in that role envisioning themselves as the champion how amazing it has, has it been for you to be a part of such explosive growth in women's wrestling and kind of be at the top of it oh man honestly it's a dream come true <laughs> because the first year of wrestling uh, that i started wrestling that is what i wanted to do i wanted to be a beacon for young girls and show them on the mat, you can be strong. You can be powerful and you can be a winner and you can be nice about it and be humble about it. And then off the mat, you can still be humble and kind and beautiful and graceful. Since the beginning of my career, I've always, always wanted to be the best representative that I could be and that I can be. And so now that I am in that position, it's incredible because yeah. it's, it's exactly where I want it to be. Granted, it's, uh, it's a lot more attention <laughs> than I than I realized. Uh, God definitely made my dreams a lot bigger than I intended. I was like, yeah, you know, we have a few more people love me. Oh, dear. <laughs> it was funny, though, because that interviewer asked you. Like, did you ever dream this was possible? And it was almost like he was setting up for a no. And you're like, yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. I did. <laughs> yes, yeah. I know I throw I throw people off when I say that. They're like, did you did you ever think? I'm like, yes, my first year. <laughs> I, I yes, I I envisioned this not as not as incredible as it happened, but I still envisioned it. And yeah. not with all of the stress, trials, and tribulations, because, oh my gosh, I just went from my first year of wrestling, getting second at state, to going, oh yeah, I want to be an Olympic champ, and not realizing there was a lot more in between. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, you know, when we talk, like, going back a second to, the, like, this growth women's wrestling, I'm curious, too, because 
you know, I think about iron sharpening iron and I think about your Olympic trials match, Kennedy blades. I mean, if that's not like two superstars meeting, that is so amazing. I'm curious for you, you know, for a while, I remember a couple of years ago, I think it was Jenna Perquette that was on the podcast. And I was saying that what women's wrestling needs to continue to grow is when you have multiple brands going head to head. Because if you just have someone who's dominant wrestling a bum, it gets boring just watching someone dominate over and over. When you start having... <laughs> I didn't say <laughs> When, when you start having these big brands collide, that's where I really think the viewership starts to skyrocket because now the storyline sells the event. The storylines create so much attention. What was it like for you? And, and what's it like as you start having this next generation come up where you're what, 29? I think she's like 18, 19. So you guys are 10 years apart. Like this is the next generation now for you. <laughs> Is definitely the next generation. And Justin, I would just like to say the future is bright. Mm. I I love it. If I retired today, wrestling would be in such good hands. Like I would not have to worry about it. I love it. I love that there are so many upcoming stars. Like I I, I greatly appreciate that because I don't I don't want the the sport of wrestling to die down after. Yeah. You know, a, a lot of amazing things have just been happening and the sport has been growing, especially on the women's side, like you said earlier. Like, I, I want people to have something to look forward to, and they do. And yeah. Wrestling Kennedy, that girl is a bad A in the making. I did not watch any video on her or <laughs> really, like, last time I ever saw her, she was, I think, like, 12 or 14 no, I think she was like 12 and she was shorter. And <laughs> I was just teaching her stuff with her and her little sister. And fast forward, I wrestled her and I was like, what the freak? Why is she so tall? <laughs> Nobody told me she grew. That's a secret is he likes to keep to himself. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. No kidding. I literally like two seconds on the internet and would have like had my answer. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Wrestling her in the finals match, I definitely had to uh, learn things on the fly about her. But yeah, I, I love that. And I love that women's wrestling is growing. I love that I'm on the, the top of that. And just I, I love that I'm a really good leader for all these young women to look at and go, wow, I want to be like that. And I want to tell them, scratch that. You want to be better than me. You never want to be like the person that you're idolizing because you might get disappointed. So please be better than them. And you will always strive for greatness. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I'm also curious too. obviously 2021 was such an interesting year for you. And, and from a wrestling perspective, it's kind of drawn out because it seems like in the wrestling world, 2020 and 2021 kind of merge into one very, very long year. And then at the end of those two years, that really was one year. You won a gold Olympic medal. You won a bronze world championship medal. I'm curious what's next for you. It's funny. I'm watching some interviews you did last night. And at that same time, you tweeted out, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So I'm like, okay, little little pencil. <laughs> no, uh, is there a shot you're taking? Is there something like, was there anything behind that? Like, Go ahead, spill. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. No, okay. So I like to inspire people. And this is a new year. And I just want people to know that you need to go out there and get yours. And yeah. I actually have a few tweets lined up uh, <laughs> about <laughs> like just inspiring people. Uh, a lot of them is from like Denzel Washington and that, uh, that famous... Uh, speech that he did to at his college put god first yeah. and so basically that that tweet that's all the only thing that i was saying was go out there and get yours and stop being afraid and it was all summed up in you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take so yeah. go do you and that's pretty much it i just want to keep inspiring people and some some words are going to hit harder than others but at the same time it's going to hit somebody and if it hits one person, 
I'm extremely happy. So that's what that was. <laughs> well, do you know what's next? Have you kind of planned out the year yet? Uh, I don't know what's next. Like, I honestly can't even tell you because I have a lot of things still in the making that I'm curious about. But yeah. for now, the same thing I said at the PFL <laughs> is I'm just praying about it. And I'm waiting to see what God has in store for me. And in the meantime, I'm going to be relaxing and loving myself. Maybe showing up at WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, 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 and doing more fun things. Because I'm actually going to be getting presented um, an award at the Houston, the Houston Sports Award, February 3rd. And they're going to be, um, they're going to have, a sweet for me and I'm going to get to go to the Rockets game with uh, 11 cool. other people. So I'm still enjoying myself. Speaking of other people, do you actually, you have, I heard in one of these interviews, you have a twin sister. I do. I've never like seen that on social unless like I missed it, but it like, does she wrestle at all? She used to. So uh, she's the reason she is the reason why I am in wrestling. She is the one that coerced me into joining <laughs> this um, incredibly uh, hard, fun, lucrative sport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. I mean, you got to give her half the gold medal then, right? You just, you know, or maybe you can just share it with her. Just like one day you give it to her to wear. And it is kind of cool. How, are you guys like identical twins? We're actually fraternal and she's a lot shorter and she actually actually wrestled a weight class below me. And uh, we're actually back to back state champions and we were both inducted into the hall of fame at KDISD a few months ago as well. And so we be making history together. We I mean, the there's two other sisters out there competing too. We just talked about yeah. one of them. I mean, maybe there's like a tag team match that needs to happen. <laughs> I, I saw Rudis is doing a super match. If you do that tag team match on the super match, I want some credit. <laughs> You're so funny. I'm sure my friend would love to do that because she uh, she retired from wrestling after college. But yeah, she definitely. She would definitely love to wrestle some more, <laughs> but uh, that that would also require her to make weight, and I don't want to subject. Ain't nobody her got time that. for that. No. Ain't, ain't <laughs> nobody got time for that. Exactly. So <laughs> at, as we begin to wind this down, I'm curious. You know, I try to bring up as much as I can about someone's story that I think there is, but is there more? Anything I kind of miss that you want to get out there? Maybe what's the favorite part of your story? Um, I think the favorite, my favorite part of my story is just living my life and enjoying the ride. I, I, I don't, I don't want to take anything for granted and I just want to take everything as is and just keep inspiring people. And I, I love that. I'm always able to do that. Even before the Olympics, before world championships, I was still that person that was loving and inspiring people and, and just trying to encourage people to be who they are and uh, be nice about it. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that's honestly my favorite part of my story is just staying true to who I am and enjoying life. Cause I, yeah. I honestly, I've lost a lot of people in my life and uh, it's, it's been a tragic, a tragic story. And so that's why I'm like, you know what? I need to love life because at any point in time, it could be gone in an instant. So live, laugh, love. Yeah, I've been having more and more of those conversations with people about health. I met Gary V a couple of years ago and being marketing guys, I wanted to like ask him about marketing question. And I got up there and the first thing I asked him was like, I'm thinking all day, I'm asking my wife, like, what should I ask him? Like, I, you know, I'm going to have the opportunity to meet him. I end up asking him like how he has this perspective that if you wake up and like the five, 10 people you love most are alive, you're so blessed and you have this opportunity to focus on that. And I said, yeah, but I don't do that. He's like, well, how many times have you done it recently? I said like three in the last month. He said, okay, you're making progress. Sure enough, you know, more and more you start having a focus on that. And I was talking to a buddy of mine, Adam Fellers about this Drake Ayala in Spencer Lee situation with Spencer not wrestling. And do you pull Drake's red shirt? And he said, 
I would. Life's too short. And I just sit back. I'm like, man, life is short. <laughs> it's just yeah. like that more and more just starting to kind of have that perspective. And now with, you know, our little baby boy here in a couple of weeks, it's, it's time to enjoy and relax. Yeah. yeah. Like enjoy the moment. Oh my gosh. I cannot, like, I currently have my dog on my lap right now. And <laughs> oh my like, gosh. What a cutie. <laughs> Yes, she, she's so spoiled. Like when I have a child, oh my gosh! I know. I'm going to homeschool the mess out of that kid. Going to love them everything. I'm going to be a stay-at-home mom. Wrestling job, all gone. I'm just going <laughs> to focus on that child. Like I yeah. am so excited. I am so happy for you guys. Thank like, you. I'm I'm excited. Like after growing this company and having this company, one of the biggest blessings of it is that I was able to grow it from home. And now that I work from home exclusively, like I'm not going to miss much because I can walk in the other room and see something. And yes. that's when you start realizing like how blessed you are, how many like different things you get to do because of sacrifice. Like my whole twenties, I just worked head down, work. And now I'm able to like take from that. So it feels good. So all good. that to say, I resonate so much with, with trying to relax and not get too hung up on what's next on the pressure of, you know, okay, do I want to be a two time Olympic champ now? Do I want, you know what I mean? Like the, I know the pressure I put on myself. So I can't imagine when you have the accolades and success, you do the, the constant tug. Cause you have a lot more opportunities than I do. <laughs> and I am getting a lot of tugs. And I I cut that room. I'm like, oh, hold up. I need time to myself. Nope. The more I get last out and I'm like, oh, no, nope. cut that room. Mm -mm. Have any brands been putting pressure on you? Like make a decision? Yes. Yes, they have been. And um, it's a, I won't say it's stressful or annoying it's just it's intrusive and yeah. i politely just go you know what i'm not really sure yet or you know what i'll i'll get back to you on that and i have to realize that's okay cuz yeah. re regardless i'm still young and i'm still going to be an athlete just give me some time to think the holidays just were here <laughs> i hosted christmas for the first time isn't that the best <laughs> Is hosting it, Christmas not the it, best? It was really fun. It was, I, oh my gosh, I want to host Christmas again. That was, that was incredible. We built our house yeah. last year, just moved in. And I said, I'm never leaving on Christmas. Never. I will host <laughs> every year for the next 60 years. I'm never leaving again. Just everyone come to me. Come on. Just, yeah. Come just, to me. Ah. I, I so much, I think I tweeted it like a poll for Thanksgiving or cause one of them, like, would you rather go somewhere or host? And I'm like, hosting is the answer. Like that is the best. I don't know if maybe it's just us. Maybe we're a little crazy, but I think hosting is the best. Hosting is the best. Now I will say every Thanksgiving, we have to go to my aunt's house. That is a must Christmas. Eh, it falls to the wayside, but Thanksgiving, that is a family tradition go to Cypress, Texas. You better have your butt there on Thanksgiving so we can have family fun games. Like we play family feud, karaoke, like just so, so many games, mafia. We just kill it. We kill it. Yeah. And then yeah, Christmas. Yeah. It's good to, it's definitely <laughs> good to host. Like, oh man, that was fun. Do you feel a little, um, not possessive, but like a dictator when you host? <laughs> I do and I don't. My big thing, let me, I'm actually going to pull it up because you'll appreciate this. Lauren Burroughs, shout out oh, to Go. She's an amazing human being. Amazing. She posted this. I want to say it was just before Thanksgiving. And I literally, there's, I don't know if I have it in here, a great couple from our church, Brendan and Steve Foster, make these signs and they're incredible. I'll send you a picture of one that's in our nursery, but I want to have this put up on a sign. Lauren posted it true. She reposted it, but she posted it. True hospitality is when someone leaves your home feeling better about themselves, not about you. Oh, so I God. saw that just before Thanksgiving and my wife's family can at times like any family 
be trying whenever anytime you get like a big family function or big family party there's something there in i remember we were talking about this and like that's that's our goal we just want people to come here have a good time have no pressure we don't want to be the house that somebody comes to to check the box we want you to come here we want to be like in your family your aunt's house that's what we want to be where people have fun and that quote like i i want to say lauren tweeted it or put on instagram like just before thanksgiving and that like i literally screenshot it and it's on my phone and i sent it to the couple that has made some signs i'm like we need this as a sign in our house because like that's even if it's in our bedroom like my wife her her idea was let's put in our bedroom so it's something we see not necessarily for like like i I love that so i I love hosting that should be a sign right right? i i would oh my gosh i would love that sign maybe your ventures we're gonna make another sign company and we're gonna get rich just selling that sign we'll give a portion (laughs) to lauren (laughs) <laughs> All right. And like, Lauren, would you like a percentage? <laughs> right. <laughs> that is a beautiful quote. Oh my gosh. I love that. Yeah. It's been in my it's been in my head. It's been in my heart for a month. So yeah. I, I love that. I definitely do. Oh. Well, l- listen, I- I've taken an hour of your time. I feel like we can go on for hours and hours because I'm having fun, but I'm going to let you go. I know you got to spend some time with your pup, your husband. You got to relax. <laughs> she but... started to whine. I'm like, chill out. What's I know. That? One of mine's at my feet right now, and she's just laying there like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm still here. But <laughs> listen, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you've been so busy, so I do appreciate it. Any final words before I let you go? Um. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you for putting me on your podcast. I greatly of appreciate course. it. Please make sure to uh, to uh, tag me and whenever you post this, that way I can, you know, retweet it or we post it or. Have, we'll be, we'll be it. sharing it everywhere. <laughs> okay. All right. And I just want to say to everyone that's listening, thank you so much for listening. And hey, you know where to follow the both of us. So go ahead and yeah, follow and, the both and they'll of us. both be linked up below or in the description or wherever you're listening or watching this, it'll be linked up. So yeah. that's it. Sounds that's good. episode 149 of Bash Mania. Thank you for coming on today. <laughs> mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. All right, see ya. And the beat goes on.